It's what it is and what it ain't. It's yours truly, Liquid Cash. I need it all out the stash, AKA Money Mitch. And right now, you're watching or listening to my first ever podcast, which is called Money Talk. You heard? Rex on Rex is coming on time. Had, had to get the new Ferrari on time. Dressing the latest fashion on time. I stay fly, you popping on line. Take, take it to the places where she want to go. See the ice on my wrist. She... And we're going to talk about money, man. And it's only right I got the money phone with me. You know I got to have the money phone with me, but I'm going to be talking about money all day. You dig? This money phone, I, 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 I dial the numbers of somebody that I want to FaceTime and give financial advice to. It's the money phone we call them up on, you dig? Make sure y'all know what it is. And hey, listen, I didn't bring it all out the bank, baby. I left some inside the bank, if y'all thinking and wondering. If I'm going to be talking about money, man, I got to have some money, right? I got to have some paper. I can't be talking about no uh, money and I ain't got no goddamn money. That's what a lot of you niggas be doing, man. You niggas be out here false uh, representing y'all pockets, man. You know what I mean? Acting like y'all got that paper and don't really got it, man. Don't be giving nobody no financial advice if your money ain't right, nigga. You did? But anyway, this is my first ever podcast and uh, we're going to cheers to that. You did? Hey, listen, man. Y'all bear with me. You know, this is my first ever podcast, and I'm I'm new to this podcast thing, but we're gonna try to get it right. You know what I mean? We're gonna try to get it right. We're gonna start off a little rusty, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put some WD forty on it, and we're gonna iron it, and we're gonna get it all right. You know what I mean? We're gonna make sure everything is moving correctly. But we're gonna talk about money in all kind of ways. We're gonna talk about how to get money, how to manage money once you get it. And I'm going to tell y'all the secrets of getting money they don't want y'all to know about. You know what I mean? Some of the things that I've learned along the way when it comes to, you know, getting to this paper. I'm a street connoisseur, man. And you might be asking what a street connoisseur is. A street connoisseur is a person that grew up in the trenches. A person that knows how to navigate their way through the hood. You know what I mean? That can see all the signs that the average person might not be able to see. A street connoisseur is a person that defied and survived the odds that was placed against them to fail. You know what I mean? And despite all the trials and tribulations they went through, they made it out. That's me, I made it out, man. Growing up in the Bahamas, moving to New York. Now I'm in, you know what I mean? To Sin City, you dig? And I made it out, man, you know what I mean? And I, and I don't say that to brag, I say that because that's what it is, you dig? If it was up to them, I would be dead or in jail right now, but. You know, thanks to the most, thanks to the most high, I'm here and I'm going to share some of the game on how to get to this paper. You know, a lot of people, you know, they find ways to get money and they don't want to share the game because they they act like it's going to be a shortage of money or something. Like it's going to take away from their pockets if they give you some game on how to get some money. You know, and I don't know all the aspects on how to get some paper, but I'm going to share whatever I know and hopefully to help somebody out there to get more paper in their life, you know. Right now, you know, I'm in my office in my high rise and I'm just, you know, sipping on some H2O, some agua. If you think in this liquor, nah, this ain't no liquor, this ain't vodka. I don't drink. You know why? Because I got to be focused. And what I'm focused on is the money. You dig? You dig? We won't keep it all the way right. You dig? Anyway, we're going to start this off right. You know, one of the most important things that I've learned growing up getting to the paper is that you have to have the right mind frame. You can't want to live rich, but you think broke. It's all in the mind, you know what I mean? The mind frame is important. You have to change your mind frame in order for you to actually accumulate the things that you want out of life. You know what I mean? It's important that you get your mind right. You know what I mean? Because if your mind ain't right, shit, ain't nothing gonna happen right in your life. So we want to, I want to educate y'all on uh, on um, just basically just having the right mindset if you're trying to get to this paper, man. That's the number one thing I had over all of my friends that was trying to get to this bag, man. I had the right mindset. I didn't, I didn't let, let nobody deter me from achieving my goal or try to steer me away from, you know, wanting to be all I can be. Because I knew at a young age, I had a lot of potential, you know, not because I was smart enough to know this, it's because a lot of people approached me and told me this at a young age. So I just, you know, at some point when enough people tell you something, you start to take, you know, take heed and realize that, you know what, somebody might be right. They might see something in me that I don't that I don't see in myself. And um, eventually I did end up seeing, 
something in myself which allowed me to be where I'm at today in life. So that brings me to the topic. Who do you listen to? You know what I mean? Who do you listen to? You When you're trying to get some paper, it's important you're listening to the right people. You know what I mean? You can't be listening to the Ray Ray up the block. You can't be listening to the homegirl that, you know what I mean? Just, yeah, she work at the hair salon. She thinking about opening her new beauty parlor, but she don't want to invest no money. She's scared to invest some money. Matter of fact, she don't even want to save no money. She don't got no money saved up. So, you know, she just talking and she just, you know, just wishful thinking, you know? So it's important that you don't listen to people who is not actually doing what they're trying to pursue. You know, you got to be in the, pro the process of doing something or trying to pursue something in order for me to take your advice. Don't tell me how to get no money if you don't know how to, if you ain't got none. You know what I mean? If your bank account is on negative, you know what I mean? Bank of America is about to charge you that $35 because you're late. Your day going to pay your goddamn bills. So, yeah, you can't give me no financial advice. Your day, so it's important you listen to somebody who has what you want and been where you're at. You know what I mean? Somebody that came from the gutter like you, that came from, the, uh, you know, poverty like you, but they made it out. They survived. And I came from poverty. You know what I mean? So I understand what a lot of people going through. And I, I, I understand. Now, I'm not saying listen to me because I ain't got all the answers, baby. You dig? I don't have all the answers. But one thing I would say, I got a few answers to some of y'all questions and it might help one or two people. And if I can help one or two people get to some money, then that's all good, you know what I mean? Or maybe y'all can help me get to some money, you know what I mean? So, you know, if y'all got a question or a comment or something that, you know, y'all want to share with me, leave it under the comment underneath this post because I'm going to post this on YouTube. But like I said, this is my podcast. Y'all can listen to this on Spotify, Apple Music, all of that good stuff. And uh, check me out. But let's get back into it. Um, Like I said, again, it's important that you listen in to the right people. I know when I was coming up and I was trying to, you know, get to the bag and things wasn't going right. Right. Things wasn't lining up right. And I was going to a lot of, you know, uh, trials and tribulations. But one of my homeboys was in the same business that I was in and everything was going good for him. Everything looked like it was on the up for him. And I remember one time he told me, he said, you know what, if things is not going right for you in this particular business, Maybe this is something that you might not, you shouldn't be doing. Now, in my mind, you know, I think he had the best interest, you know, in my well-being. But then I stopped and thought about it. I was like, you know what? Maybe just for a split second, I started to think maybe he's right. Maybe this is not the best, you know, uh, business for me to, you know, get into or get involved with. And, uh, you know, things is kind of like going up and down for me. But I said to myself, I said, you know what? I don't want the journey to be easy. I want the journey to be faced with challenges and, uh, you know, situation that's going to kind of make things rough. I didn't want a situation to be easy. You know what I mean? So even though things was not lining up right for me and things wasn't going right, I took on the challenge. I didn't give up. I kept moving. I kept pushing forward. You know what I mean? I didn't let his words of, uh, 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 you know, kind of like negative words, really, because you try to tell me not to pursue something that I know that's a lot of money in. And you're trying to deter me from, you know, getting the bag, kind of, you know, kind of, so to speak. You know what I mean? So I didn't let his words, you know what I mean? Plant the seed of doubt or negativity in my mind. I brushed that shit off and I kept moving. I kept going because I knew, you know, these difficult times was just, you know, challenges, you know, and I always like to say that you know, there's a, a there's a positive seed planted in every garden of adversity. So anytime you go through adversity, there's a positive inside of that, you know, uh, that garden that you just got to find. And, and it's all about the perspective and how you look at things. So I took on the challenge and, you know, I'm here today because I didn't give up, you know, that year. I made six figures and, and based on my grind and my hustle. But if I had listened to him, shit, I don't know where I would be right now because, you know, I didn't I didn't have another way out. I didn't know what else to do. So I stuck to it. And that year I made six figures, man. You know what I mean? Well over. I might have 
shit. But anyway, let me not let me not, let me not say too much. But I made a lot of money that year. You know what I mean? And uh, that's just because you know I, I stuck to it. And that's what you gotta understand is that delayed gratification. Things might not come when you you know plant the seed, but you gotta wait for that you know that flower to blossom. You gotta wait for it to grow. But you gotta have the mind frame to understand it's gonna take time. You dig? And uh, once you do the right thing consistently, you're going to see the right results, the results that you're looking for. But you got to stay in a positive mind state at the same time while you're trying to achieve your goal. Stay in a positive mind state. You dig? That's very important. Don't be doubtful. Don't be thinking about the lack of not having what you're trying to pursue. Just focus on the end goal. And that's very important. Focus on the end goal. I'm going to keep on repeating that. Stay focused on the goal. That's it. Don't worry about you not having it. Uh, don't worry about what other people are doing, who's succeeding and you're not succeeding, feeling like you should be at the top and they should be at the bottom. Man, don't, you know what I mean? Don't let none of that negative vibe get inside of your brain when you're pursuing a goal. Stay positive and be happy for other people. <laughs> Applaud them when they winning. You dig? Feel good about somebody else winning. Don't be a hater because a hater Run the paper away, you dig? Don't be a hater. So it's important. Who do you listen to? Like I said before, listen to somebody who has what you want and been where you're at. Pick the mind of the people that have the things that you want in life. You know what I mean? Like I said, a lot of times the young adults, they ask, they don't ask enough questions. And when they do ask a question, they ask the wrong question to the wrong people. So they never get the right answers. So it's important that you understand that. Ask the right questions to the right people. And no question is a stupid question. So you can ask me whatever you feel. Who do I listen to? Well, I listen to myself, but I get counsel from people that are well, uh, well, well off and, and, and that's really getting some real paper. You know, I get counsel from my CPA. I get counsel from my financial advisor. But ultimately, I listen to my gut feeling. You know, you know, I wanted to start a podcast and, you know, I had thoughts about doing this months ago. And, uh, you know, there's some people that told me maybe you shouldn't do it. Maybe you, uh, you know, you're stretching yourself too thin and you got a lot of more things that you should be, you know, investing yourself into like music and, and other things that I like to do, like writing books and, you know, just other business ventures. But I said, you know what? I want to start a podcast, man. It's something I want to do, you know, and it's something I feel good about. So when I thought about the Money Talk podcast, I felt good about it. It was in the sweet spot. You know, it was in the spot that I felt like, you know, I just felt like excited about the process of getting this done. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to let nobody throw me off my square. I'm going to stay focused and I'm going to go ahead and start my Money Talk podcast, you know? And that's what I did. So ultimately, ultimately, like I said, I listened to myself. You know what I mean? That's how I, that's how I make moves when I'm moving through life. But I take counsel and I take advice from a lot of people. You know what I mean? Because we can't get to success on our own. We have to, you know what I mean? We have to gravitate to certain people that help us in our along the journey. You can't do it all on your own by yourself, you know? But one thing that helped me a lot is that reading. You know what I mean? That helped me a whole lot on my journey to acquire wealth. You know what I mean? Reading was one of the things that I... I, I will I will contribute to me being successful financially because, you know, growing up, I didn't read much. And because I didn't read much, I didn't get a lot of the answers uh, that I was looking for when I was young. You know, I was stubborn. I was hard headed. I thought I knew it all. And ultimately, you know, I had to bump my head a few times. And after you, you know, you bump your head a few times, you start to ask questions, you know, like your parents used to say, a hard head makes a soft ass. You know what I mean? So. I definitely learned my lesson and I learned that uh, jewel at a young age, you know, you know, you got to be able to uh, listen to the right people and take advice because you don't know it all, man. You definitely don't, you know, and I want to shout out to uh, Andrew Carnegie here. Yeah, I want to shout him out. You know why I want to shout him out? Because you might be asking, you might be thinking, who's Andrew Carnegie? Well, Andrew Carnegie is one of the, one of the richest men in the world back in the 20th century. He started U.S. U.S. Steel, and he commissioned Napoleon Hill to write the book "Think and Grow Rich." And when I read that book, that got me on a positive mind frame to start to uh, expand my, uh, you know, 
my mind to think about life in a different perspective. It's a dope book. If you haven't read it, read it. And if you read it before, read it again. It's something that you might have missed. So you want to read that again. Well, Andrew Carnegie is a person that commissioned Napoleon Hill to write the book, Think and Grow Rich. Like I said, the title is Think and Grow Rich, not Work Hard and Grow Rich. You know what I mean? They want us to believe that the more, the harder you work, the richer you're going to become. And, you know, that's not all the way right. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you could think yourself into a prosperous life. You could think yourself into a, a wealthy and a uh, prosperous life, man. You know what I mean? It's all in the thoughts because you could work hard all day. You know, I know a lot of people work hard and ain't got no money. You know what I mean? You can work hard all day, but if you don't got the right mind frame while you're working, I don't care how much work you do, man. It ain't going to pan out the way you want it to pan out. You know what I mean? Because you got a negative mind frame, and, you know, when it comes to getting to the bag. You know what I mean? So you can't just be thinking or just working hard, but your thought process is in a negative space. You mad that you at work. You mad that you go. To, you got to go to work. How many times you went into DMV and they mad because they working at, 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 you know, for eight hours or 10 hours a day. You know, they always give you a stink attitude and that's why they never get a raise. And they wonder why they never get a raise or they never get promoted to be a manager or whatever because your attitude is horrible. You're working hard, but you ain't working smart. You know what I mean? So that's the key to work smart. Your thought process got to be right. Thought process got to be definitely right. You know what I mean? And anything that you're doing. And that's the key. It's the thought process, man. You don't have to work hard. You can work smart by thinking right. Think rich. You dig? And you will live rich. But a lot of people think broke. Because a lot of people don't have the, you know what I mean, uh, the right mind frame. They think they're thinking about what they want, but they're actually thinking about the lack of not having it. The lack of having, not having it. They thinking of, they doubting the fact that they're going to get it because they're thinking about how am I going to get it? I don't see a way for me to get it. I don't got no money. I don't got this. I don't got that. They're thinking about all the things that they don't have instead of appreciating what they do have. You did. So it's important that you keep your mind focused on the main thing. And that's the main thing is to get to the, the bag. Get to the bag. You got to keep your mind on the money, baby. You can't worry about not having no money. Keep your mind focused on getting to the bag, man. You dig? So, yeah, it's important that we... You know what I mean? Focus on the main thing and keep the main thing the main thing. You know what I mean? And I also got to mention, listen, also got to mention that when it comes to uh, who do you listen to, it's important that you find yourself a mentor when you're navigating through life. It's important. I like to speak about this because a lot of times, like I said, people think they can do it on their own. You know, and shit, man, it's a lonely road at the top. It's a lonely, lo lonely journey trying to get to the top. And you can't do it on your own. You got to have to find people that's like-minded like you that want more out of life. And when you find those type of people, stay close to them. Build your team. You know what I mean? Because your team is going to help you to execute. Because a lot of people is in the game, but not everybody make it to the playoff. You know what I mean? That's important that you understand. And I'm going to repeat that. A lot of people are playing the game, but they don't make it to the playoff. And even few, fewer people make it, uh, win the championship. You know what I mean? Ain't a lot of people winning the championship, man. A lot of people end up in jail or end up dead trying to play this game, trying to play the money game, trying to chase the bag. And it's a, it's a, it's a science to get into this paper, man. Some of the signs that I dropped, the jewels that I dropped just now in this video, and some of the things that most people don't want you to know. They don't want you to understand that the fact that in order to acquire wealth, you have to have a, you know, uh, the right mind frame. You have to have the right mentor. You got to find somebody that's doing what you're trying to do and pick their brain, be their apprentice. We don't use that word a lot no more. We don't use the word apprentice no more in our vocabulary. The last person that was using that word and running with that was Donald Trump. You know what I mean? He, he had a show called The Apprentice. But we got to get back to that. Understanding, you know, we have to be, you know, a protege to someone who has what you trying to get. 
If you want to, if you want to be a plumber, you want to get into the plumbing business, or you want to be a welder, a welder, you have to be an apprentice to somebody first. You know what I mean? You can't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to be a plumber and I'm just going to, you know what I mean? Start working as a plumber and own my own plumbing company. You got to be an apprentice to somebody first and learn the business. You know what I mean? You dig? So we got to understand that who do you listen to is very important. You know what I mean? Who do you listen to is very important. If I had listened to my homeboy, you know what I mean? Back in the days and maybe he meant well, but <laughs> whatever he was saying was negative and I didn't take his advice. If I didn't listen to him, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. You dig? So you have to listen to the right people, though. Find the right people and, and pick their brain. You can hit me up. I'll give you some advice on how to get to the moolah. But like I said, this is my first episode of Money Talk. And, um, you know, we're going to focus on how to get money, how to manage the money once you get it. Because like I said, it's easy to get money. It's harder to keep. You know what I mean? It's hard to keep money. Trust me, when I when I uh, was trying to get paper coming up, it seemed like it was the hardest thing to do was how, how I'm going to get some paper. I remember hustling and trying to get over a $10,000 mark. I was stuck at $10,000. I couldn't get over the $10,000 mark. I felt like it was the hardest thing in the world. And then once I got over the $10,000 mark, you know, I thought life was going to be a little bit more smoother and life is going to be a little bit more easier. But now nah, you have to protect the money that you get. You know what I mean? You have to protect the finances that you get. So you work hard to get the paper. And once you get it, you got to protect it because there's people that are trying to take it away from you. You know what I mean? So you have to understand that part of life, understand that part of the game. When you out here and you hustling or you out here and you working a nine to five and you trying to acquire this paper and you reach a certain level of, you know what I mean? Like, damn, I stacked up 10 grand. There's going to be bill collectors on your ass. There's going to be niggas in the streets that's on your ass and trying to get that money because it's somehow, some way, somebody know you got some money. You might not even tell nobody that you got some money, but somehow, some way, somebody know you got some paper. You know what I mean? Excuse me. It's like they know you got some paper. It's like bloodhounds. Motherfuckers sniff out the fact that this nigga got some money today. You know what I mean? And they on you. Family trying to ask you for this. You know, uh, bill collectors in your pockets. Things come up that you have to take care of. You know what I mean? That you can't wait on. And, you know, and, and that's just life. Money is not meant to just keep, you know, you have to circulate the money as well. You know what I mean? You got to circulate the money. You know what I mean? That's how you get it back. Money is currency. So currency is continuously flowing. So, you know, a lot of people that try to hold on to paper and not try to spend none, they end up losing it all anyway. You know what I mean? Because you're trying to hold on to something that's supposed to be, you know, uh, exchanged throughout the world amongst you and other individual. You just want to, you know, you just basically want to control the flow of your currency. You want to control the flow of it. You want to be able to maintain a steady flow. You don't want to just get it and spend it right away. That's what a lot of people do. They get money, they spend it right away. You don't want to fall into that bracket. You don't want to be a victim of that. Getting it, spending it right away. You know, I know a lot of dudes that used to hustle with me, that used to grind with me. And, you know, we made the same amount of money every day, but I end up having more money than them at the end of the week. Why is that? It's because as soon as they get their money, they end up spending on some new Jordans or they end up buying some new outfits or whatever. And when I was coming up, you know, hustling, I would buy new shit every day, but I wouldn't go buy no expensive shit. I go to H and M. I go to Forever Twenty One. Buy me a little T-shirt. Buy me a little whatever, whatever, and I make that shit look hot. Why? Because it ain't what you wear; it's how you put it on. That was just me when I was coming up grinding. You know what I mean? Because I'm on stacking mode. I'm, when I'm stacking, I ain't slacking. I ain't spending my money on bullshit. You did. Most of my homies, they buying the latest Jordans. I didn't give a fuck about no Jordans. Excuse my language, but this it is what it is. I didn't care about no Jordans, man. You know what I mean? I give me some Air Force Ones, and I was Gucci, all white, uptowns, New York City on a summer day. Shit, you ain't fly to me, and I don't care. I, you, I don't care what you got on. You got Gucci's on. You got Louis's on. You got Jordans on. Once I got them crispy Air Force Ones on, all white, not a stain on that motherfucker. I'm flying to whoever you put next to me, you did. 
And that's how I, that's how I kept it. You know what I mean? Because I felt my game was going to get the female that I wanted anyway. You dig? So it didn't matter how, what I had on. You dig? But anyway, that's important. You have to understand that, you know, understand that currency has to flow. So you have to monitor how you spend your money. You know, you don't want to just be a, you know, a cheapskate. You know what I mean? Just, you know, get money, but don't want to spend it. You know what I mean? Nobody like a cheap nigga or a cheap female. So, you know, you got to be able to spend your money and enjoy your money. But you got to know that people are going to try to take your money once you get it. So it's not how much you make, but it's how much you are. Um, how much you share amongst your peers as well, too, because you want to educate them on how to get money as well. You know, you don't want to keep the money just to yourself. You want to educate your friends how to get some paper, too. You know, I always used to put my people on on how to get some money. That was just something I loved doing. Anytime I find a new hustle, I put them on how to get some money. You dig? But like I said, again, it's the Money Talk, you know, Money Show, you dig? Podcast, the Money Talk Podcast. And it's your boy, Liquid Cash. I ain't going to talk y'all to debt. But, you know, I'm going to try to do this once a week for y'all. And hopefully y'all find some value in the content. And, you know, it's my first episode. So y'all, you know what I mean? Bear with me. We're going to get it all right. We're going we gonna to fix the kinks. And we're going to get it all the way the way it needs to be. It's going to take time. But, you know, grow with me as I grow. Also, I want y'all to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, this podcast will be on Apple Music, Spotify, and all the other podcast outlet that's out there. So y'all tap in, you know what I mean? Type in the Money Talk with Liquid Cash and I should pop up. Also, I want y'all to join my Facebook uh, book club. Think and uh, the Power of Thought book club. Definitely join my book club, the Power of Thought book club, where I'm going to be dissecting my book, The Power of Thought getting more in depth in the book and explaining certain highlight points that I feel is valuable for the listener or the reader to really tap into. And we're going to dissect my book and other books in the future. The Power of Thought Book Club. Yeah, definitely join that. Also, I'm going to be dropping, you know, one of these podcasts every week, every week or every other week. You know what I mean? When I got time, you know what I mean? I'm a busy man. So if I find time to do one of these podcasts, I hope y'all find value in it because I'm a very busy man. You know what I mean? Got a lot of things going on. Anyway, I want to leave y'all with this before I get up out here. You dig? Check it out. It's not what you eat, but what you digest that makes you strong. And it's not what you learn, but rather what you remember that makes you wise. And it's not what you earn, but what you save that brings you wealth.